Hey guys, welcome back to the live stream tonight. Tonight we are talking about van build budget. So the way that I came up with this topic for tonight is I was actually working on playing a little bit of catch up with all of the uh, material deadlines. So when they were coming due, uh, when they were coming back in stock with certain vendors and I kind of uh, referenced my sheet. So I'll talk about this in just a second right here. Um, but we're going to talk about putting together some type of organization for you as a DIYer to kind of keep track of your build process. Now, you may think doing DIY that you don't need to stay organized. You can kind of do it as you go. Um, but something that I ran into this uh, past week when I was checking up on when parts were coming in uh, I thought this would be really beneficial to you guys so that when you're doing a DIY build, even though maybe you don't have a strict timeline of when you need to get it done because you're working on it in your garage or part-time on the weekends, what you're going to have happen, especially with this uh, current uh, logistics situation as far as um, shipping goes, delays, and then also things that are in not in inventory, um, what tends to happen or what happened to me last week is I started to go through and call up on these products. Um, so I'm going to show you the sheet here in just a second. And I started to see this trend of where, you know, one was a week away and then two weeks away. And then one was four weeks away. And then the one that was four weeks away just today changed to six weeks out and um, some other things. So we're going to talk about kind of what I went through last week getting organized for this build behind me and uh, how it can help you out. And another way that I can help you guys out is I want to check, I want to show you our new van builder cheat sheet. So I created a van build cheat sheet and this is a free download that you guys can get off of our uh, websites, van builder HQ. And within this free cheat sheet, uh, it's essentially a Excel sheet that I've put together and it's going to help you um, find parts quickly. So all you got to do is, actually, let me pull this up really quick. Get this form. I had it ready and I lost my link. There we go. All right. Hold on a second. We're back at it. So if you go to our website and you click on download the free cheat sheet. It's going to take you to this link, put your name and email address. It's going to send it directly to your inbox. Now, what is this? So when you click on it in your inbox, it's going to pull up this form and it's essentially an Excel sheet. And what it is, if you guys have not seen this yet, is this is the last three years of all of my Amazon purchases that I have used in van builds. So it's all the uh, electrical cables, it's uh, you know solar items, stuff like that. And if you go on this list, you can sort it by multiple categories. So we got cargo storage, electrical, fasteners, insulation, roofing, security, solar. So it's going to give you an easy way to find products that I've actually used. And funny enough, Last week, I actually was trying to find this uh, solar panel package that Renogy put together. And all I had to do was go to my sheet, go to the solar section, and I was able to actually find uh, the panel system that I bought. And then I was able to go on to Amazon, click on the link, and get what I'd already purchased. But for me, I didn't have to go to my Amazon account and look through all my past history. I had it organized in this list and I could just reference off of it. Now, the cool thing about this list is that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a living document. So over time, I'm going to continue to add to this list. And a good segue from here to what I'm talking about today is we're going to talk about uh, this budget sheet right here. And these items on here, I have not updated this sheet with that you guys are going to get if you download that link. So over time, I will add stuff that I'm doing currently in the shop, new products, more higher end products, 
to this sheet so you can also uh, reference it and organize it. But I just found it extremely helpful and I think it's going to be extremely helpful for, to you guys because there's a ton of products out in the market and as a DIYer, it's really hard to find where you need to start. And one of the most important things on this list, uh, hands down, is the tool section. So if you go to the tool section, there is a select uh, group of tools. It has a, uh, There's rivets, there's drill bits, there's um, Propex, Propex expansion toolkits, tubing cutters. Um, let's see what else is on here. Uh, Self-adjustable crimping tools, hole saws, uh, riv, riv, rivet nut drill adapter kit. I use that all the time, especially installing the Adventure Wacking kit. So anything you've seen in the videos on this channel of me putting something in the van, that product is on this list. Um, the higher end products, such as like the Red Art components, and some other components I have not updated on this, but they will be coming to this list. But if you're looking for some place to go as like a one-stop reference tool, go to our website, click on get my free cheat sheet, name, email address, click download, it'll go right to your inbox, and the form is gonna look just like this. Now, once you have it, you can organize it however you need to. You need to put it, if you need to highlight it, put it in Excel so you can organize the categories, that's awesome. But uh, we'll answer some questions on this later in this stream before we end tonight. But let's get back into uh, what we were going over. So in just a second, I'm going to show you this sheet. And it looks a little bit like this. Now, this is not my complex form. Obviously, as a builder, I have something that is way more complicated than this. Uh, it has to do with the van, uh, where the van was purchased, um, the title, uh, insurance, um, all of that really technical stuff. So that is in another place. This form that I put together for you guys uh, tonight is pretty much my notes from last week that I put together just to get my head refocused and um, kind of back on track to what needed to be checked off. And what needed to be checked off is this column right here that I call date. And so what I've done is I listed out everything that I need to uh, put, uh, build out in phases. So when I do a customer build, I break it up into phases. It could be four phases, six, two, Essentially, the phases are the build process to where uh, there's a certain amount of material that needs to be purchased and delivered to me by a certain date in order to be at a certain process of the build. And then the customer uh, can either pay deposit for those materials, get those ahead of time, or build it into the schedule with the labor and so forth. So when you do it, break it into phases, um, one phase needs to be completed before the next phase can start. So this one behind me is our spec build for the company. So this is not a customer van. So this one's a little bit different. So the build out sheet, what I have here is I needed to recreate <clears throat> my phases for the shop build. And so what I'm doing is I'm going through here and I'm breaking it down into um, what would be my own phases of the build. So for example, this first one up here, I've got the flooring phase. So typically, you may want to do the walls first. Now, if you guys have watched uh, videos on this channel, you'll know that we have installed parts one and two of the Adventure Wagon uh, interior uh, kit. Part three that everyone's looking for I haven't, <laughs> I have not produced it yet, but part three are the final trim components that go over the pillars, the headliner, um, and then the rest of the L track that bolts in the rest of the components of the van. If you guys have already been watching the last couple of streams, you know there's a hiccup that I have uh, gotten into, and it has to do with the 
um, adventure wagon bump out panel. There's nothing wrong with the panel. It's completely on me because I need to figure out how to trim out the bump out so it looks professional because the bump out is designed for just a blank bump out. It's just an upholstered blank, you know, to give you some extra room. It's not designed uh, necessarily for a C.R. Lawrence window because when you put the window in, and you guys can re reference the uh, last stream, when we put the window in, the bump out is offset an inch and a quarter. Now that's great if you didn't have a window because that inch and quarter is the space where you would put the insulation, stuff like that. Um, however, the uh, I need to close that gap up. So I made a finishing trim ring we talked about in the last stream. And everything was good. I had enough material to upholster the trim ring, but I didn't have enough to do both. So I called up uh, my supplier for the Marathon Fabric and found out that um, they're extremely behind as far as getting the product back in stock. Uh, but it will be in stock at the end of this month. So I have to push shelf that until the order comes in at the end of this month to start back on that. So now I've moved from that back to my flooring phase, which is kind of where we were leaving off on this uh, budget document. So you kind of have to ebb and flow with this. Now, for me, I have time on this van, but if you were a DIYer and you had fixed weekends or days that you want to do this project and you found out that the upholstery was not in stock or you did cut out your window and put it in, but then you found out the panel that you anticipated putting in quickly is going to take longer. So if you build a sheet like this, it's just really simple. It's just a Google Doc or an Excel sheet, and it's going to help you, um, or at least I think it will help you organize your process a little bit better, regardless if you're a business or a, a DIYer. All right, Daniel, welcome. Welcome to the stream tonight. Uh, hopefully I can make this a short one. I don't know how long-winded I'm going to be, but uh, uh, I thought this was really important to go ahead and go over before materials come in and we get going on this build and we don't get a chance to talk about this. So I'm going to walk you through how what my thought process was in this document. This is nothing fancy. This is not some template thing, but if you guys want to copy this, feel free. So we're working with the 2024 Transit 148. That way we can just keep organized. If you just have a van, you can, you can just put your van or put your van name. But what you want to do is break it out into your systems that are critical components. Um, and sometimes critical components, usually the ones that are more expensive. Things that if it wasn't in stock, it would not allow you to continue the process of whatever you're building. So for example, flooring phase. You'll see there's a water tank in the flooring phase and there's power. Well, Nick, what does it have to do with the floor? Well, on this current build I'm doing, the power, which is a six gauge wire that is gonna be coming from the engine batteries, uh, I actually need to wire that underneath the flooring. So I need to have a channel going underneath the floor so that when I put the floor down in permanently, I will have two runs of this uh, power cable to get me to my battery system and I'm going to double it so that in the future, if the customer wanted to upgrade the charging capacity, say go from 30 amps uh, up to 60 amps, instead of running a whole other line, it would already be built into the floor and they can just tap right into that. So that's, that's why this is on this list. Uh, the next thing is I actually upgraded to the 2Tech2 two two flooring, which we're going to order here probably tomorrow. And the 2Tech2 two two flooring uh, is different than just the black coin lawn seal that I was originally going to put in that. I'm probably going to move that coin lawn seal and have that be the wrapped rear water storage tank panels and the power system itself. Paint. 
So uh, there's an acrylic uh, paint for epoxy to adhere. Okay, paint. So uh, there was a question um, from a subscriber that was asking me about, Nick, are you going to keep your wood floors bare or are you going to paint them? So I will paint them because where the ABC rig flooring that I had, there was a coating on the floor and I was just going to, you know, follow directions and apply it onto that floor. Upon doing more research, I wanted to, the wood, these wood panels do not have that coating on it. They're just raw wood. So uh, what I need to do is actually paint an acrylic uh, paint. There's a specific one, but I, it's just, it lost me. Um, it's on my notes. But there's a special acrylic, acrylic paint primer that's going to go in the wood, and it's going to allow the epoxy of the floor to adhere properly. So I got to buy that. Um, then the epoxy, I've already got an order trowel. And uh, let's see here. Okay. So these things. So flooring, you would just think of the wood and the floor, but there's other things. Um, the water tank is on the flooring phase because I need to locate the in-floor shower drain pan that I'm installing in this van. I need to locate where I'm going to cut the hole in the van. And then once I cut the hole, I need to make sure while the floor is can be moved, I can pipe the drain to the water tank that I'm getting from Agile Off-Road. And uh, this is really, really cool. Check this out. So they finally have a uh, water tank, an undercarriage water tank. I was going to make my own DIY version. They have one that's already custom fitted. So I'm grabbing that. Um, and I probably need to buy it now since I told you guys. <laughs> I tell you guys on live stream and then it goes out of stock and then I can't get it. That would be hilarious. Um, anyway, so I need to make sure that the piping can reach the location that I anticipate drilling the hole in the floor for the shower pan. So you guys can see like these are, there's multiple layers to all this stuff. So if anything in this flooring phase was not available, I can't complete the phase. I can't uh, complete the project and then move on to another project. So by organizing this and kind of before you actually purchase things or set dates on the counter to do stuff, just just write it out, get your thoughts on paper, and kind of see where everything's coming from. Now, the, the bonus of this is if you're working on the floor, other things come to mind. For example, when I was looking up the uh, swivels, I noticed that DIY Van was talking about how the swivels uh, that they sold were specifically for the power seat version of the Ford Transit. So this van has power seats. So now that brought it to my mind that I need to research to make sure that the Scopima seat swivel that I have is going to work. If it doesn't, I'm going to need to buy an additional two rotating bases that are made for the power seat version of the Ford seat. Um, and then while thinking, I needed to also buy the handbrake relocator kit to lower the handbrake so that the driver's seat can actually swivel. So again, check it out. I started with a flooring phase and I was getting all my stuff in order. And then I had these streams of thought here to double check on these items. So it's not only organizi organizing your thoughts, but it's getting you aware of other things that are closely related or adjacent to something that you're working on in the van. Just put it down. It doesn't have to be Neat. I mean, like I said, this is just a Google Doc. Um, the next thing I moved down to was the power system. Now, I'm doing a Red Arc complete power system. Um, and uh, I'm uh, adding a couple of things to this. Um, I left this vague because uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to put this system together. I do know that I like to use the Victron Lynx distributor 
uh, for the fuses of it. It's just a really nice organized way to do it. And then the Renogy solar panels uh, for the roof. Now, I'm going to make a note here. And we need to... You can put in here, check roof measurements. Um, for example, when I put the, a, uh, the, the AC unit up top on the roof, and the Adventure Wagon has a pre-cut location for the vent fan, I have, fixed, I have a fixed area on the roof, and you may have to change your footprint of your solar panels as a result of items that you're putting on your roof. So again, look what we did. We have a power system, but then we thought, you know what, let's also check on that solar panel. And by checking on the solar panel, it means we need to check the roof. So <laughs> again, everything is tied into everything. And now let's move down to interior. Um, let me make sure you guys are following me here. So the flooring phase is obviously what we're doing next in this van. We're ordering these components. When they come in, ignore this stuff down here. When this stuff comes in, we will proceed with, with the floor. We're, at, we're kind of at a pause right now. Um, we're checking our power system so that when we're ready to do that, we can go ahead and have that on order, and it'll be shipped here when we're ready to start that phase. Then this is where the tweak started to have started to ha happen last week. So, uh, Flatline Vanco, um, love their products, um, but everybody else does. <laughs> so, a lot of their products are sold out from time to time. So, usually, if you want something, it's usually sold out. The other, this, the next thing is, you know, back in stock. Okay. Our stream just went out, so it's back now. Sorry for the delay. Um, okay, stream's back up. But just know that a lot of these companies, you're not able to pre-order with money and have it on hold for you. It's kind of, if it comes in and other people get it, so be it. Uh, but since most of them do that, you know, it's not, I can't really say anything about it other than to call them up, find out when it's coming in, Put the date on your calendar and then just be prepped to call and order it uh, kind of first come, first serve basis. So that's what I've done is I put these dates down. And then here, I've got the kitchen galley, the cabinets, um, and then this pull-out tray. And then I was like, you know what? Um, I, I need a heavy-duty slider for the uh, portable toilet and the step to get into the bed. So while that stream of thought came... I just put it on here. And then next, got our last two things. So we have the exterior. So once we kind of move through the van, we'll start to look at the exterior components. And then last week I found that the tire carrier moved from April to May first now. Uh, but I was planning on getting the wheels painted. So now I'm still... So you see it's now. <laughs> so I'm still getting the wheels painted now. But there'll be one wheel that I, you know, will just have to put in the side of the shop and wait till the tire carrier comes in and then put it on the van. It's okay, but, you know, I like to kind of do everything and then check it off, move to the next item. But you'll learn with uh, building vans and doing your own DIY that you're you're just going to just get used to jumping around. It's a... Uh, just, it's just the way it is. You can plan as much as you want, but um, you'll you'll be jumping around with with products. Um, but this just let me see, you know, what I'm ordering, and then I put a little bit of uh, some extra wants on here. For example, these fog lights. Uh, I think Freedom Van Gogh has them. Uh, we'll talk about these products here in just a second before we end the stream. Uh, graphics from Rigwell. And then maybe just some extra stuff uh, that we may put on there or may not, or just uh, the customer who purchases purchases this van, we may just let them see if they wanted to have these as add-ons. 
So while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and put the possible add-ons that a customer would want on this list just as a reference so that when I go to sell it, I can have a list of options to be added on to the vehicle. And I already know what I was thinking about at the time that I thought it. Then last but not least is this AC system. Um, you may be you may wonder why I have it at the bottom. Well, uh, this Dometic fan, I can, I mean, it's a Dometic AC unit. I really can put it on in the van at any time. Um, might make a little bit of mess, but you know, it's just one hole cut in the ceiling, a run of power cable going down to the power, um, uh, where my power system is. And I can already pre-wire that. And when this comes in, I can just cut the hole out and drop it right in. So this is a very uh, small look into what I do to uh, organize this stuff. Like I said, all the bigger detailed things are in other documents. But since I made this, I thought it'd be really good to share it with you. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I'm going to talk about a couple of these products. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the stream um, probably the next 10, 15 minutes. So if you guys are watching, you have a question, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Uh, but the first thing I want to show you was that water tank from uh, Agile Off-Road. I think it's really cool. Uh, I have not yet found a water tank that is specific bolt into the transit. And now we have one and it's at a reasonable price. Uh, another thing to mention... This is a very overpriced <laughs> water tank, but you know what? I I really love it because of the features. Now you can get a jerry can that's, you know, 20, 30 bucks at Walmart. The reason that I will pay this much money for this is because it has a lid that you can stick your whole entire hand into the container. You can scrub it out with a sponge. You can get it very nice and sanitary, very clean. It has a very strong handle. You can pull it in and out of the van to dump it. It has a brass fitting made into the tank. Very nice, very strong. And it comes with a hose. And the diameter of the hose snaps directly into the Camco sink drain. So when you guys go to, uh, when you use your van builder cheat sheet <laughs> to go to the Camco uh, link for Amazon, the hose right here is the same diameter as this hose. And so all of those features is why I think this is, is excellent. Plus it's the footprint. It's nine and a 16th about nine inches wide. I mean, uh, you're typically going to have the nine inches be your depth and the 14 inches uh, be your width on this. Um, just so you get it in and out, you you can make it the long the long way, but that's the orientation that I like. Um, yeah, but 18 inches high, 14, nine. This is typically, you can fit two of these underneath a uh, standard kitchen galley that they sell for Fans, or if you're building your own um, and you're building it more like a, a home style sink or countertop cabinet type of thing, two of these should fit in uh, relatively good. It's seven gallons too. So if you have two of them, that's 14 gallons of capacity, which is pretty amazing. Um, if you want to get a little bit more fancy, they have uh, ones that you can buy with integrated pumps and hoses and switches. Now, remember, these, this is a simple setup. Um, might be perfect for the DIYer because it's an all-in-one system. All you need to do is provide the sink and the drain, and you have a whole little kitchen. Um, now, it is just going to be cold water coming out of the tank, but uh, here, here we go. So see this one? This, this price makes more sense because you're getting two tanks, a water pump, a switch, two flex hoses, and the drain hose. For four twenty nine, uh, so this is actually a good value. 
if you wanted just a simple uh, water system with jugs. All right, let's go through this list. And then let's talk about, if you guys want any of these uh, to be uh, my long opinion on these, uh, as we're going through them, just put it in the comments and we'll talk about it in the future stream. Um, I'm going to do a little teaser about Red Arc. Uh, I really enjoy this system. If you guys never heard of Red Arc, uh, mostly Renegy or Victron, uh, kind of being the leader of you know what everybody kind of holds as the the top kind of gold standard of van life. Um, I would push back and say that Red Arc is right up there at the top. Uh, I think um, Limitless, Limitless Vans uses them in a lot of their customer builds, and that's where I found out about them. I also found about them at, uh, if you go to, um, let's see here, if you go to uh, four-wheel drive 24-7, if you go to Four Wheel Drive Twenty Four Seven's YouTube channel, these guys are wild. Uh, they <laughs> go in the outback of Australia. I mean, in just treacherous conditions, and they're all outfitted with the Red Arc system to power everything that they need: their refrigerator, um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, these guys abuse the vehicles like crazy, and they use Red Arc. So. If it can withstand this, it's I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that you are going to be just fine um, putting this in your van. But um, I've talked about Red Arc products in Thomas's van. I've not put a full detailed review of this product, but when I purchase it for this spec build, I will go through it step by step. So let's talk about a couple of the products that um, I really enjoy. Uh, that would be the... Um, their Red Vision system. So if you go to products and you go to vehicle management systems, you have a couple options. I would default to the Red Vision system. They've they did this TVMS Prime. Didn't think it didn't used to be called that. But um, let's see here. Make sure that I am not signed in. Okay, good. All right, so here's the setup. So the first box is going to be your MPPT controller and a 30 amp DC to DC charger, all in one, uh, with integrated shore power input. So it's pretty amazing. Typically, you would have to get an inverter charger, separate MPPT controller, separate DC to DC charger, and it's all in one. It has a really nice display. Um, that you can configure the buttons and the screen so you can customize it to have your lights, water pump, off-road lights, um, uh, all that kind of stuff. It does integrate with integrate with the new inverter. However, I actually like having an inverter separate than have a program into this display. Um, just with what I had to deal with with uh, Thomas's van, it was just simple to turn a switch on and have the inverter on and not go through the Red Vision system itself and program that. And then on the right side is kind of the bread and butter of this whole system, and this is the distribution box that houses uh, five 10-amp circuits and five 30-amp circuits. And what's nice is if any of the fuses blow, there's an indicator light on the box that communicates with the Red Arc Red Vision uh, interface, you know, immediately lets you know what's blown and where, what that you have labeled it to be, that circuit, uh, what it is when it is blown. Um, it's going to come with a shunt if you get the uh, Red Vision system. The shunt is going to help you uh, find out how much power is coming, going in and out of your system, as well as uh, working with the system itself to provide you an estimate of how much battery life you have left. And you guys can see right here, the interface is really nice. So you have 
three buttons on the left, three buttons on the right. They're all programmable to whatever you want. You want your fridge on and off, your interior lights on and off, your water pump on and off. Uh, maybe like an A or B air compressor. Uh, so here's the game changer about this whole system. It's completely wireless and you can download an app on your phone and control the whole entire Red Arc system just with your cell phone. The whole entire system. So anything that you program in the Red Arc system itself. Um, oh, hey, Jesse. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, every, anything that you program in the Red Arc system itself, uh, you just refresh your phone and it's automatically going to uh, go through the whole entire system. There is a learning curve with programming this. So hopefully I can provide you guys um, in the coming weeks with a, an, an easier way to explain the programming. They do have uh, company videos. Um, they're, uh, <laughs> they're just kind of overproduced in my opinion. They're very pretty and, you know, they have cool B-roll and all this stuff, but uh, I like it to get straight to the point um, when I'm watching them. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I can make a video to show you how to program this easy. Because once you get the hang of it, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. You can make a momentary, momentary switches, uh, on, off, um, you know, delayed, linked. I mean, all kinds. there's a lot of options with this system. And the nice part is the screen turns off. So when you go to sleep, there's not like this light shining in your van where you can't go to sleep. This the sleep, the screen goes to sleep, and then to wake it up, you just touch any of the buttons. Um, let's see here. Okay, so that is the system itself. Now I'm gonna reference the uh so this list that I'm talking about. Um I wanted to show you guys some additional options about Red Arc. So when I put this system together, it's only a 30 amp DC to DC. Uh, so in the van world, if you're a, not like a power user, you're just kind of like a simple user of, um, uh, hold on a second. I'm reading the comments here. Window bin line, where did you go? Uh, so Rip Torn, I'm gonna answer your question really quick. Um, so he's asking the window that I did on the last live stream, the awning window, or the CRL T vent window. He's asking why did I go with the awning instead of the slider behind the driver? So I am personally a big fan of the um, awning style windows because if you think about it if you have the slider style uh the slider style if it's raining one day and you want to open up the slider the rain might blow into your van might not be a big deal but you know sometimes when i'm going camping or something like that and the rain's blowing uh the front vent of my van that i have the rain kind of gets in the window. So with the T vent style, uh, this van has T vents in the back with the they're the bunk T vents. Those are the AW ten thirty threes. So those are the the more rectangular skinny ones. And then the one on the sliding door and the one on the driver's side are the same. They're the T vent style. Um, the sliding door T vent looks like it does two, but it's only one. And the driver's side that uh, Rip Torn is talking about, both vents come out. But think about it. You can open up the back and you can open up the front vents. You can open all the vents. And when it rains, the rain just kind of beads off the vent instead of blowing into your van. So that's the theory on why I went with the T-vent windows. So I hope that answers your question. All right, back over to Red Arc. So... Um, the limit to this system, it's an incredible system, but the limit is the 30 amps of charging. So if you have a 300 amp hour battery bank, I would say you're fine. You're doing pretty good. This van, for example, has a 600 amp hour battery bank. So we really need to beef it up a little bit of charging capacity. 
So we're going to do that a couple ways. Since this system has a built-in MPPT solar controller, um, and if you have any, if you guys want any details on all these acronyms and words that I'm saying, because maybe you have no idea what they are, which is completely fine. I didn't know what they were at one point. But if you want that, put that in the comments below. We'll, we'll talk about it. So the Red Vision system, uh, it has an MPBT controller. And if we click on it, there's like a brochure. There we go. It will tell you the max solar that you can put in. So if you go here, let's see, you kind of have to dig for it. Give me one second. I think it's the manager 30 manual. All right, if you dig through all this, all these words, We've got uh, solar area. Here we go. So if we look right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. So solar input power rating is 520 watts. So the main system itself, this system right here on the left, it can take up to um, 520 watts of solar. And then you have a nominal voltage range. Again, we're kind of getting the weeds here. I'm just trying to keep it simple for tonight because I'm going to stop the live here in just a little bit. <laughs> but uh, this range is what you're going to find on the back of your solar panel. And you're going to find um, if the solar panels you're purchasing are within this range. And this is a pretty wide range. So I'm pretty sure this will fit most solar panels. Anyway, you only have a limit of 520. Okay, but that's not our issue. Our issue is the DC to DC charging, which is uh, da, 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 da. okay. Let's just back up. The DC to DC charging is thirty amps on here, so that's kind of our limit. So if we want to increase that limit and we want to stay with Red Arc, we're going to go over here and we're going to look at dual battery systems. And then we're going to click on dual battery chargers. And then we have a list of these chargers. So these chargers are like kind of the baby version of that manager 30. So you have, what we're going to do is we're going to supplement our 30 amp charging system with additional amperage coming from the engine batteries. So we're going to take that 30 amps and we're going to bump it up to uh, 55 amps. Now, on Ford Transits, there's a threshold that you want to maintain. Typically, the alternator is going to output, uh, I believe it's 170 amps, and you want to reserve 100 of that for the van itself, uh, and then the other 70 can be used, but most people only do a max of 60 amps. Uh, I'm going to be talking kind of fast through this, so again, you want to slow me down, ask a question. So we got about 60 amps to work with without having to uh, put too much load onto the alternator system itself, the factory alternating system. Because essentially we are connecting this to the batteries that the alternator of the engine is charging. So we got 12, 20, 20 with ignition control, and then we've got a 25, and it bumps up to 40. So we don't have a 30. I would like to have a 30, but you know what? We're going to stay safe. We're going to go with a 25 amp. So we'll choose this, and then now we have our 30 amp plus 25, we got 55 amps. But check this out. This also has an integrated MPPT controller. So you can add solar, you can add engine and solar to this one product. It's really, these products they have is, are really cool. Um, and you can see down here, we've got our different amp amperages. So we got our 25, 40, 50. So down here we have our uh, solar. And I'm just reading this. Uh, the output power, I'm pretty sure. 
Just I think 375 is the solar, but don't quote me on that. It might be in another manual. Um, I just kind of quickly looked this up. But you can see now we can have two solar inputs. So this is actually really good. On the top of your van, you're typically going to have to have different size solar panels. You may have two 100 watt panels that fit perfectly on your van, but then you have some weird area on your van and you need to put maybe three 50 watt panels. You need to be careful because the 100 watt voltage output is not going to be the same as the 50 watt panel voltage output. Now those difference in voltages can affect each, the efficiency of each panel and by affecting the efficiency of each panel, the 100 watts may work, run worse or the 50 watts may run, run worse. It just depends on the orientation that you connect them. But the, the cheat code to fix this is have the same solar panels connected to one dedicated system, MPPT controller, have the other size panels bundled and put on the other MPPT controller. So now they're uh, split and they're not affecting each other. And you kind of get the best of both worlds. And if one system goes down, you have redundancy so that you're still charging with the other system if something weird happened. Um, so we're going to do one of these. And then last but not least, Red Arc has just introduced um, inverters. So they now have inverters. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. So now you can get a full power system through Red Arc. They used to not have uh, inverters, and they also used to not have solar uh, fixed solar panels. So essentially, you can buy all your components from them and uh, kind of use them as support as well. And I think they have really good support too. All right. Well, that was just some loving on Red Arc. So let's go back to this form. Um, but yeah, let's uh, quickly talk about Flatline Vanco and then... We'll see if we have any more questions. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do Flatline Van Co., these fog lights from Freedom Van Gogh, and then we'll talk about Dometic, and then we'll be done with the stream. So if you guys have any questions, um, kind of let me know what those are because, uh, yep, we're going to hop off of here in just a minute. So Flatline Van Co., all right. So Flatline Vanco makes van parts. Um, you may have seen them on a bunch of YouTube videos. They're kind of known for their roof racks uh, for their vans. So they have this style roof rack. Kind of looks like that on the Ford Transit. Um, they have other products. So I'm going to go to van parts, and then I'm just going to go view all for transit. So we got roof racks, ladders, they have little nudge bars and stuff. They actually have a tire carrier. So again, their stuff is sold out because uh, it's cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you this company. Uh, these galleys, we're going to be using uh, these galleys. These are sold out, but we're waiting for them to come back in. But we're going to be using this galley and this 24-inch galley uh, to do our conversion. And essentially, this picture represents is a good representation of what the final product of the van is going to look like less the floor and the white color. We're going to have a black cabinet and then we're going to have the two tech two flooring. Wait a minute there. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know I didn't change it back. Um, all right. Let me go back through this since you guys didn't see it. Flatline Vanco makes van parts. They're known for the roof racks. They have all kinds of components. And we're going to be using these kitchen galleys. And I'll be modifying this kitchen galley. So we're going to have um, a drawer system come out of here. Uh, that's, going to, that's going to be a storage for the portable toilet, as well as the uh, 
heavy duty drawer slides that are locking to be a step to get into the bed system, which is also Flatline Vanco. Because Flatline Vanco is a one of the rare companies that actually make adventure wagon compatible com parts for your van. So they have a bed system that we've utilized as well as upper cabinets that we're probably going to uh, purchase and just bolt in. Now, what's, this is a really nice way to build a van for a potential customer because you can mix and match stuff. So the stuff that we don't purchase off this site to put in the van as uh, features, a customer can go to this later and they can um, hop on here and, and, and buy it. Um, yeah, so there's, here's the components. All right. So finishing this up, let's go to Freedom Van Gogh. And we want to look at, uh, transit LED fog. see nope why am I upgrade here it is um let's see here van parts warehouse that's where they're selling it so this is pretty cool so check this out guys this is a new product it's a fog light upgrade kit so you actually cut out the old light fix in this new bezel frame and then plug this into your existing fog lights. Uh, if you guys wanted to do kind of like a Baja design vibe on a budget. Um, now these are about $890, but if you guys know Baja, those are extremely expensive. And this is the kit for the left and the right, including the bracket and the lights and the pigtail. So, if you're kind of want, hoping that something like this would come along, um, that's something that we're probably going to put on this van behind me, and I'll show you how we do it. Then last but not least, we have the Dometic RTX fan. So Dometic. This is the AC rooftop unit. Um, one reason that I like this unit so much is because it's the footprint. So if you go to the engineering drawing, the, uh, the fr footprint on this AC unit is extremely, uh, uh, sh I want to say shallow. It's, um, it's closer to a max fan cutout. So it's about 14.4 inches by 14 inches, something like that. One of the, one of them is bigger than 14 inches, but when you install it, um, it's pretty easy. It goes right in the top and you have an AC system. So it is very approachable as a DIYer. Um, and to make it an even better setup, if you go to DIY van, he makes a lot of custom templates for not only Max fans, but also the Dometic system. So if you type in Dometic, uh, you type in transit, he makes an adapter ring for the Ford Transit. And this will allow you to flush mount it to the top of your roof without having to add a bunch of foam and making it kind of like a, a janky, you know, install. It'll be a very professional install flat surface. And it's all machined out for the corrugations in the roof. Um, pretty cool product. Not too bad of a price. Um, yeah. Well, guys, that is going to call it for our stream tonight. But I wanted to hop on one last time over to um, our Van Builder HQ website and show you the Van Builder cheat sheet. This cheat sheet is going to help you guys... Uh, find products on Amazon that I've used over the past three years quickly. So when you go to this link and you click on it, this is what you're going to get. 
you're going to get this sent directly to your inbox. It's going to have over 250 items that I've personally bought off of Amazon through converting vans. It's going to have everything that I've used in the electrical system as far as fuses and stuff like that goes. And something I think is the most important that I mentioned earlier is the tool section. So these are tools that help me put the van together. So crimping tools, rivnut drill adapter kits uh, for putting rivet riv nuts in the van, metal hole saws, uh, Propex expansion toolkit for doing all the plumbing, um, all kinds of stuff like that. And then this is a living document. So as more products come in, for example, the products we talked about today, like the Red Arc system, the inverters, we'll put the on this list so that you guys can uh, just have a little uh, a go-to section, a cheat sheet to help you select products that you want to put in your van and also be a place to go to so that instead of combing the whole entire internet, you can quickly go to this document and search for something that you need. It's going to give you the Amazon link and then boom, you've got the part. So if you guys are interested, go on over to the website and click on get my free cheat sheet, put your name and email address, click download. It'll be sent directly to your inbox. And I really think it's going to help you with uh, getting more organized with your van build, but then also uh, providing a place to go to to find good parts that uh, may be hard to find otherwise. Then last but not least, we have uh, my company which is Odyssey Custom Vans. So if you're looking to get a professional van build done, Odyssey Custom Vans is my professional van building business. Click on the contact form. You can contact me directly. Put your name, email, and phone. And in the message, you know, tell me your story. Why are you guys looking to get a professional van build done? Where you're going? Are you wanting to do a full-time van life? Or you want to do a weekender, more kind of exploring uh, doing weekend trips, maybe camping or, uh, you know, taking a trip around the United States. You know, what are you looking for in a van build? So put that in the message below. Love to get in contact with you. When you fill out this form, what we'll do is we'll set up a phone consultation. We'll kind of get some basic information and then start the build process, um, developing and designing your future van build. All right, guys, that is all that I have for tonight. So if you have any other questions, about van budgeting, tools to help you budget. Uh, put those in the comments below. We can address that in a future live stream. Um, and as always, if you have any questions van related, put those in the chat as well because I'd love to go back, look through those, and grab topics to talk about in future live streams. But if you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and sign off tonight, and I'll see you guys in the next live stream.